In this segment, we're going to look at the data structures used to organize page tables. Uh, throughout this talk, we'll be using 32-bit address space just because it's easier to describe on a single page, just easier to draw. All right, so <clears throat> the first uh, data structure we're going to look at, which is widely used, across most operating systems is a tri data structure, um, which is a variant of a conventional tree. So what you have is a hierarchical organization, uh, not unlike a B tree, where you have top level uh, root um, page tables. These point to a second level directory and then there's further map down. Okay. So the reasoning behind this is that applications are have mostly sparse address spaces. So for example, these white portions. And when you have these white portions which do not have any data on them, which do not need any space, then you don't need to map it down further. So if you look at it, the regions that are mapped, those have a direct entry in the next level. In the next level as well, you apply a similar procedure where regions that do not have any data on them are not mapped down, but regions that do have data on them are further mapped down. This is beneficial because for representing a sparse address space where your overall address space of the program is four gigabytes, although the program actively uses only four megabytes or so. In such cases, the portions that are not there are large fractions of the portions, right? Four gigs versus four megs. Um, there are large fractions of the address space that are not mapped at all, and they you can save space on them. And so, if you look at it, uh, the overall organization is such that it, you try to maintain similarity so that you can use recursive functions to process these. And so, if you look at the top level page table entry that has 1,000 page table entries, right? So, if you have four gigabyte space, then a thousand entries, each of these represent a four meg region, right? Each entry represents a four megabyte region, right? And then as you map further down, those in turn have a thousand entries, and so each entry at the second level, so you've got the first, second, uh, so you've got level one, level two, and you've got level three, which is the actual. So each of these represent a four kilobyte entry, right? So second levels represent, and you, you further use the reference pointer to go get the actual entry. So it's actually really, it's two levels of page tables, but the third entry is, is the actual entry, which you also need to read to get the physical frame number. Uh, typically, the reason you have these sparse address spaces is, is that normally there's a lot of white space in the middle of the address space, just because of the way the operating system decides to lay out things operating system slash comp and compiler. So the bottom is typically used for text and data segments. So, um, you know, the zeros are close to zeros. Right? The top of the stack is used close to four gigabyte region. So that is used to manage the stack. And there's free memory in between, which is typically used for heap, which grows dynamically over time. It depends entirely on the program as to what fraction of the four gigabyte space the program's actually going to use. And the multi-level page table may also keep a few of the smaller page tables to cover the required pages. So really what you're doing is you're chaining up page tables as you're going along. Uh, specific example of this, this is another illustration of the same figure, just with specific numbers plugged in. So we've got 10 bits as a root index for 1,000 entries. So each of these is uh, 1024 entries. Uh, each entry itself represents a 4 megabyte uh, process table, which in turn has another <coughs> uh, 10 bits of page index, so this is another 1024 entries, and finally each of these map to 4 kilobyte space, which um, is the actual physical memory in your system. Uh, a more concrete example, this is what Linux uses, uh, or the terminology, so it calls the top level page, uh, root page table as a page directory, second level as a page table, 
and the last level as the actual page. And it also uses a CR3, which is your uh, register, CPU register that resides <coughs> on the CPU. So it points directly to the page table so that when there's a miss, you can directly use the uh, CR3 register to refer to where the page table is starting and start to fetch things. Uh, so that was the example of a tree. Another example, if you look at the main challenge with the tree, is that any reference is going to traverse through all the levels. So any reference, if you want to look up, if you want to do a virtual page to a physical page translation, leaving aside notions such as caching, any entry has to go through this, right? So this is the critical part. And if you look at the critical part, that's one, two, and then this one, which is, it's really three pointer dereference. And that is a hard problem to solve, right? So because if you think about it, each pointer cannot be loaded mm -hmm. until the next one. So you're effectively bearing the latency penalty of traversing all these levels. A faster ha data structure would obviously be a hash table. So the reason for um, inverted page tables is that as this, so one is the critical path itself, the other is as the size of the virtual memory at space grows, so example 64 bit, additional levels must be added, right? Each, so as when you go from 32 to 64, you have more and your page table remains, your page size remains the same, you need more entries that you're going to organize. And these entries either have to be organized as either more levels, so you need more levels in the hierarchy, or you need more entries per level. Right? So you need more entries per level. The problem with this latter is that if you have a really sparse address space, then more entries per level means that you have internal fragmentation and you just wasted a whole bunch of space to represent data that's actually uh, invalid. So you have most entries in the page table just saying the page does not have any data in it. And so one leads to internal fragmentation, the other one leads to more levels. There are alternative solutions, which is what is, is an inverted page table. We'll look at um, how it works in a second. So uh, more uh, just quantifying that uh, the more levels examples, if you have a 64-bit address space and you have four kilobyte pages, each page table can store 10, 24 entries, thus you need six levels, right? Now you need six memory accesses for each address translation, which would be bad. Uh, on the other hand, if you had more entries, then you would need, you know, uh, a million entries for each level if you want to maintain the same number of levels. And so now you have more space that's wasted. Right, and so that's the trade-off that you make. So the way inverted page tables work is in, as the name indicates, you actually index by the physical frame number instead of the VPN. And the number of entries in the page table is equal to the number of physical frame number, which is smaller than the VPN. So if you have 16 gigs of ad, uh, memory in your system and you had four kilobyte pages, that is a million, that's that's only four million entries. Right. So essentially what we've solved the problem of um, the page table being proportionate to the virtual address, virtual page number to the page table being proportionate to the actual physical memory in the system. We look at what specific um, new uh, properties this introduces. One of the interesting things is now all processes can share this page table. So you don't need a page table per process, but you need a page table for the entire system. Right? So the way uh, inverted page tables work is because they're shared between all processes, now you need a process ID to do some big weight between um, P1's virtual address and P2's virtual address. So if you have the same address, across uh, two different processes, you need to distinguish between them, right? And so for that, we also need the PID. Typically, in, in, an, in a conventional system, uh, when you have tree-based page tables, you had a page table per process. So you didn't really need to disambiguate within the page table which address the process belonged to, or which process the address belonged to. Uh, but now you do need to, because 
you don't know from the address um, you you don't know from the address who is the actual owner of the page right or you know are you mapping 0xA63 of P1 or 0xA63 of P2 you have two virtual addresses right every process would have the same virtual address so now what you do is each entry is both a PID and a VPN okay and your index is really your phys physical page number so you've got as many entries as your physical page okay when you have an incoming page virtual page number you start looking up in the reverse direction so you index in and you start looking up right you miss you go to the next one so it just it's like a simple hash table that uh, you've all studied in data structures and it keeps going on and on until it finds the requisite uh, entry so once it finds that it does the so it found this belongs to process ID 0 <coughs> which is a process making the access and hence <coughs> it does not need to um, it uh, it's a valid access so if there was another process one accessing then it would be an exception but in this case this is a valid access it picks up the corresponding physical page number which is in this case 18F1B and then you've got the requisite data so if you look at it instead of in a conventional hash table you would have gone in this direction right in this one you have as many entries as proportionate to your physical page or physical address space then what you do is you take a virtual page number and you start looking in the reverse direction and if you miss you go to the next one and you go to the next one so on and so forth uh, there are a couple of different options in the worst case you're going to be, your search is going to be proportionate to the size of the physical page address so if you had 16 gigs in the worst case you're going to go through all of these entries but um, you rarely do that because you have some form of hashing as well so essentially with this um, its worst case is much worse than the tree-based data structure. In the tree-based data structures, all accesses, for example, would be three, right? You are, you're always within three pointer accesses, you know. In this case, worst case, you could be looking at the all the million entries, right? So for example, what if um, this was the 0x10, right? It was something else. Then you need to go through each of these. But in reality, what you do is you have some uh, simple form of hashing that helps you look this up uh, quite easily and in the average case you, you, you end up doing pretty well right. so just to summarize a simple inverted page table is one entry per physical page um, okay so one entry per physical page uh, the table is now shared by all the processes so each um, The table is now shared by all the processes, so each PTE contains a process ID and a virtual page number. Uh, the translation comparison means that you compare both the virtual page and the process ID, and if the match is found, then the index in the pa inverted page table is the physical page number. Okay. Uh, search can obviously, as we discussed, be very inefficient, so the solution to that is use a hashed um, uh, inverted page table to reduce the number of were the average number of accesses worst case you could be looking at all entries um, a quick question is to ask yourself is the ppn stored in the table no since the table index is the ppn itself and note that we're doing a reverse lookup the table index automatically indicates what physical page you're actually looking at all right so that brings us to the end of page tables and data structures used to organize page tables. The next thing we're going to look at is specific hardware used to accelerate and speed up page table lookups.